It's now time for us to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from all around the world. Of course, we do start here at home with our own newspaper of record, This Day newspaper, uh, which is leading with a story that we broke down in great detail, which is that the, F the federal government has approved the implementation of zero-duty VAT exemption on selected food items, and this is set to continue until December. Uh, very quickly, though, above that, below the masthead, is a story from the National Security Advisor uh, Malam uh, Nuhurubadu, who s said attempts to disrupt peaceful conduct of Edo Gubapol will be met with full force, as he warned that any attempt to undermine, interfere with, or disrupt the peaceful conduct of the September 21 governorship election, of course, will be met with the full force of the law. So, uh, of course, road to election in Edo State, I know we'll be discussing that uh, further a little bit later in the program. So, let's now segue to Punch. Punch is also focusing on issues of food security. Uh Punch is leading with a food crisis. Military deploys troops in northwest, north central farms. Farmers Association have lauded Tinubu for this, and they say the move will boost harvest, tackle food insecurity. And the deployment is said to enable farmers access to farms and ensure hitch free planting season and hope for a bumper harvest. Uh, that's the lead story from Punch. Let's move to Vanguard newspaper. And Vanguard is focusing on CNG, a conversation we had also in great depth here yesterday. Uh, Vanguard is saying hurdles ahead of CNG vehicles rollout. This was an investigation, and it cites that local mechanics and techni technicians are at sea with the technology, that users are still unsure of the safety of using CNG-powered vehicles, and that the massive awareness and training is generally lacking for the implementation of this mass rollout. So that's an investigation by Vanguard. Uh, another conversation that the Vanguard is carrying on that was huge yesterday, it was everywhere, which is an anger greets rep speakers withdrawn counter subversion bill. Now, uh, I, we're going to get into it in, in more detail because I know it's an, another one of the newspapers. But of course, the counter subversion bill, which had only reached the introductory stages, but thank goodness it, it was leaked onto social media, or rather it was released, it was shared on social media and uh, when people caught the content of it there was an outrage about it and uh, rightfully so by close of business yesterday uh, the speaker of the house of reps Tajidin Abbas who had uh, proposed this bill very quickly uh, rescinded it so let's move to daily trust Daily Trust, of course, is also um, running with that. Speaker bows to pressure with the draws bill on new national anthem recitation. Of course, one of the aspects of that bill was that those who did not recite the new national anthem would be subject to either imprisonment or a fine. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that's a, a topic we're going to uh, dissect when we're analyzing the papers. Uh, lead story, again, conversations carrying on uh, from yesterday. Senators month Monthly pay hits two billion. Senator Kau Sumaila, Sumaila excuse, me, excuse me, stated that each senator gets 21 million running costs. Of course, this is contrary to uh, the 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 the. Um, statistics, excuse me, the data that was shared by Ramfuck yesterday stating that senators earn about 1 million naira monthly, including allowances. So Serap and Iaga, among other CSOs, are calling for these earnings to be adjusted given the masses' realities. So that's a conversation to, that's going to continue happening as we continue to hold our lawmakers accountable, especially given the state of the nation. Now let's move to the Guardian newspaper, uh, which is leading with a story of course, yesterday we also touched on renewable energy. The Guardian is saying 39 dams are moribund over poor maintenance, obsolete equipment. And there there's data that breaks down uh, what our dams are used for, you know, besides irrigation, besides water supply, you know, just 4% uh, being used for hydropower. And, uh, you know, which is uh, not surprising given the fact that 39 of the 39 dams are, you know, are not being maintained. We know the potential of water as a source of not just energy, but a source of so many things uh, in, in the economy and in daily life. So it's unfortunate to hear that we are ignoring our water bodies, the 39 dams. Now, also on the front page of The Guardian, pressure mounts on Tinubu to sack oil sector chiefs. 
another conversation that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Guardian breaks down uh, some of the discussions that have been dominating the public space regarding the oil sector and all the different moving pieces that the public has been demanding answers from. And it seems the more you look, the less you see. Uh, let's move to the rest of the African continent. And we start with the Daily Graphic in Ghana. A Daily Graphic in Ghana leads with a story about uh, the, the state of national land says public land secure, and this is according to the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources. But I don't want to focus on that. I'd like to focus on the story at the top, at the right-hand side, which said inflation eases to 20.9% in July in Ghana as food inflation declines sharply. So that's our neighbor, uh, you know, seeing some positive developments happening to the economy. We know that Ghana has gone through a very difficult period, especially with, uh, you know, trying to restructure some of their debt and so forth. So positive to see that there's some uh, good development ease in terms of inflation, especially food inflation. And of course, uh, possibly a great move for the government, uh, the sitting government, as we count down to Ghana's election, which will take place in in December. Now quickly to South Africa. The citizen in South Africa leads with an image of a laborer in Bangladesh carrying poultry to a shop. Uh, quite a powerful image. But below that, it says parties over for the Zoomers, question mark. Of course, this refers to the political party of former President Jacob Zuma, Konto um, Sizwe, uh, who uh, this report states that it looks like the party gained a lot of momentum during elections, but is starting to dwindle and fizzle out. We've seen a lot of infighting within the party. We've seen several members of the party and the hierarchy of the party being hired and fired. At some point last week, I believe a number of his MPs, his members of parliament were recalled from the list. So many things happening. So this report is asking whether Jacob Zuma's political party is just a family project. Now, internationally, to the New York Times, one of my favorite publications. New York Times front page always has so many things to look at, but I just thought to zero in on a couple of issues. Uh, on the left-hand side, we see a story that says religious right targeting IVF as allies shift. That's quite a scary development uh, because, of course, we know that uh, abortion reproductive rights are very big on the, on the ticket where the American election is concerned. Now, if we're saying that the religious right are now targeting IVF and wanting it to be uh, m more and more difficult for couples and families to access IVF, that is quite a, a concerning development and something to surely keep our eyes on. At the bottom, though, of the New York Times talks about that message that we're looking forward to from Kamala Harris tomorrow. And the headline there is, vagueness is a strategy as Harris prepares her economic message. Well, we just have to wait and see until uh, she, does, she delivers that message tomorrow. Now to the New York Post, of course, all of you who are familiar with American papers will know that New York Post is uh, a friend of the Republican Party. Uh, they are definitely pushing the Republican messaging under Donald Trump. Front page, stolen youth, a heartbreaking image of what migrant crisis has wrought, an 11-year-old in cuffs for a violent mugging. Right, so those are uh, some of the headlines from around the world, a, a lot to unpack there. So number one, I'd like to talk about this uh, senator's salary. Isn't it funny that in a country where the government struggled so much before they finally arrived at the minimum wage, senators can easily just get 21 million naira for running costs like here. So that means the money definitely might be more than that. So for a bunch of less than uh, a little over 100 guys, and they claim they're representing the people, they're going there to make a killing while the people suffer. And for good measure, they couldn't even tell them to buy their own cars from this big fat running cost they have. Guess what? The state also buys a car for them, about 160 million, with a lot of other perks. Why wouldn't any young person out there want to be a senator rather than work his way up to a private sector job or to the top bachelors of a private sector job? This is murder. We must cut the salaries of public officials because you cannot get the best. What you get is all sorts of criminals that would game the system as long as they can win political position to be senators. And that's why you see you're not getting the very best in politics. If you truly want to get people that want to serve, cut the salaries to a bare minimum. 
And you're going to see the people that truly want to serve coming in. So I am happy that we can now say in your face, Ramfak. In your face. Because we told you that what you were writing on paper is not, is not practical. People would spend billions of naira to run for sending positions to be paid one million naira every month. That money is, is not even enough for some of their girlfriends, high maintenance girlfriends. But that's the society we've built. As regards Kamala, I mean, I agree with you, Vimbai. I think it's not fair that Kamala has not done a real policy direction interview. But we're waiting for her speech tomorrow. I think she's talking on policy. You can blame Biden for anything, but one thing you can never blame Biden for is the fact that he has his hands on his policy. Apart from the theatrics, a leader must know the content of his stuff. He must know his numbers. He must know his policies. He must know the empirical views of those policies. If Kamala fails in this speech she's about to have on policies, then we might have to take a second look at her. All right. Um... That's an interesting take, Rufai, because I know that you've often, often talked about your support for Kamala, but I do believe that in a broader sense would be that what do the American people want in the immediate? Of course, economy is very important, but also there have been concerns around the kind of leader that could potentially take them from point A to point B or lead them to prosperity without dividing the nation. So I hope she's doing a lot of work in terms of her numbers and just um, macro and micro. But very importantly, I believe that the American people would also want a robust conversation around other things. And the person himself or herself who plans to lead the, you know, f um, the nation of the, one of the greatest nations on planet Earth. But let me talk about Nigeria. And this time, um, the report by Premium Times, which talks about the fact that the House of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable uh, Tajuddin Abbas, has withdrawn his very, very controversial counter subversion bill, um, another related uh, draft legislation. He had defended his position, and I say controversial because when people heard the content of this bill that had passed first reading, it beggars belief. Number one was to punish people who refused to recite the national anthem. We all, we all know what happened after the old national anthem was restored by this assembly and how some Nigerians kicked against it and refused to sing it. He also talked about destroying you know, things that are considered national assets and just the punishment. Now, the punishment for refusing to sing the national anthem, if I can see you laughing because it's very funny, Five million naira or up to 10 years in prison because you refuse to sing. And I heard something this morning. I think it was some Ayadio on, on radio, and I thought it was very important. You cannot legislate patriotism. You cannot force people to be patriotic. It is the move and the action of governments that would inspire people to want to stand, defend, and die for their country. It's not by forcing them to do it. And I wanted to look at, okay, what are the kind of bills that have been sponsored? Because it's 21 million naira at the minimum that they are earning has to count for something. And so you want to see if this, the people, in, the, the members of the house are aware of what Nigerians really want. Amnesty International, I'll end here, it says focus on anti-corruption bills, focus on things that are important to Nigerians, not things that are not essential. Thank God he has withdrawn that bill. And I'm glad that he said it's because he listened to wide consultation from people. But really, and as we like to joke too much in this country, I'm boring your life.